This practical comes up a lot. It's a separate science only practical. It's to do with reflection and refraction. Let's do reflection first. Now reflection involves a mirror. The first thing we're going to do is have our ray box set up close to our mirror and we're going to draw around the mirror on a piece of paper. Next we are going to use a protractor, really important to remember protractors in this experiment, protractor to draw a normal line, a normal line on the mirror that is 90 degrees to the surface. So let's draw on what that would look like. Sometimes you get a diagram in an exam, it's helpful. So a little dotted line, 90 degrees to the mirror. Step three, you're again going to shine the ray box or shine the light from the ray box um, at a certain angle, depending on if they give you results or not. But let's start, say, at an angle of 20 degrees between the ray box and the normal. So let me show you on the diagram what that looks like. Um, obviously measure with a protractor again, just mentioned protractor loads of times in this practical because it is absolutely essential. Um, so let's say you have the ray box light comes in like that. Um, the angle would be between the ray and the normal. I know that angle is not 20, but let's assume it is. Now that's our angle of incidence if you get a table um, with the results in. Okay, next what we're gonna do um, is essentially uh, draw X's where the ray of light goes, uh, so along the beam of light, and that's where it enters and also where it leaves the mirror. So the reason for that is because you've got all the equipment out, it's quite hard to draw a straight line in when you've got the box and the mirror lined up. If you've done this practical, you'll know that. So we draw X's and then you take away the equipment and you essentially join the uh, lines up. So you remove the mirror and you join up or trace the rays um, through the X's. Okay. Lastly, measure the angle of reflection. So that's this angle here on the diagram. So that's between the ray of reflection and the normal. Okay. And again, using a protractor, mention it again, 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 again. Okay. Now what we should find is those two angles are equal, um, which, uh, you know, obviously it won't be exactly equal because there's always measurement error, there's random errors as well. Now the slightly more common version of this practical to come up is to do with refraction. Now all I'm going to do, um, and you can pause the video here with that method saved up, um, is I'm just going to edit this method um, just to bear in mind it's for refraction instead of reflection. So for refraction, um, instead of a mirror we have got a glass block or a perspex block we still got a ray box that's shining light in um, but this time we're going to see how it behaves when it goes through the perspex block or the glass block so we're going to replace the word mirror with our um, perspex block on paper and uh, we're still going to do a normal line so let's um, kind of draw that on on our diagram um, and we are going to still shine the ray box in at an angle of 20 degrees to that normal. It doesn't have to be 20, it could be 10, it could be 40. Um, often if they give you results, then you, you kind of go with those. Um, so let's draw my normal on um, 90 degrees with my protractor. Then the ray goes in, you measure the angle of incidence and you shine the ray box in at that angle. Okay, now next we should know that the ray goes through the box at an angle and comes out at an angle. But we don't know that because we have the block in the way. So the really important for this method is you mention those X's or those crosses you draw along the, the incident ray. And this time it's the refracted ray coming out. Then you take off the block, stage five, and you trace in those missing rays. That then allows you to measure the angle R. OK, now uh, I've missed out one word mirror with stage four, but you see how very, very similar those methods are. OK, either of them could come up, um, but essentially you're replacing mirror with block and you're replacing reflection with a fraction. OK, now for this practical, uh, the angle of incidence is always going to be bigger than the angle of refraction rather than being the same. You can guys see those two angles there. I is always bigger than R. Now for both experiments, you wanna make sure you repeat for different angles, depending on which ones they give you. So in my example, you'd say repeat for 30, 40, 50, etc. however many results they tell you about. Often they give you a table of results and ask you how you'd find that out. Now plotting a graph for the reflection practical um, is going to be uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, my independent variable IV goes on the X axis and the uh, dependent variable uh, goes on the y-axis. 
Now, for the refraction practical, uh, this is, beg your pardon, um, this isn't going to be a straight line, and this will curve. So be prepared to draw a curved line of best fit for this practical. It should be a smooth curve, just one line going from the origin uh, between as many points as you can. Uh, don't make it sketchy. Um, this is for the reflection uh, graph, though. You should find that the two angles are equal, so they would be uh, directly uh, proportional because it's a straight line going through the origin, and there was one doubles, the other doubles. Often gets asked in uh, questions about these sorts of practicals are sources of inaccuracy. Where might you have inaccuracies? So uh, the big one is that the width of the beam from the ray box. If you've ever used these, um, they can be quite thick. They're not actually that thin, especially when you're using a protractor. So it can be too wide, which means it's difficult to see or to measure where the center of the beam is, basically. OK, so to measure the center of the beam, that needs to be like top of the priority list so we can measure the angles correctly. Um, however, if we can't do that, then that is a big problem. Safety wise, um, the ray box is the big issue here. Um, it gets hot, so you want to leave it off between readings or don't have it too high a voltage or um, uh, yeah, leave time to cool before touching it at the end of the practical. Uh, that kind of thing uh, would be the essentials to talk about there.